fucking 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 Holy sh- Holy sh- Holy sh- <gasps> You hermetic murder hobo fuck sh- fuck Christ fuck fuck And he Kojima's a lot in this game, let me fucking tell you. Fresh from his submersible torpedo thing in the icy Alaskan waters, Snake slips into an underground dock, and the colonel calls him on his codec as soon as he resurfaces. The codec is basically your new radio. You'll learn to love the codec. Or not, whatever. But it's gonna be a massive part of the series from this point forward, so get used to it. The colonel explains that it vibrates the small bones of your ear, so no one else can hear who you're talking to. This raises a lot of questions about this mission, ones that we'll explore as they come up, but the most burning question I have right now is... I'm still talking out loud, right? Anyone around me won't hear you, so I'll just look like I'm talking to myself. Also, I just want to point out that the Colonel is still using the same frequency as last time. Different technology or not, those are still the same fucking numbers, and we're still going after fucking Foxhound Colonel! And pulling up to the underground docks, we get our first glimpse of Liquid Snake. Shirtless, arrogant, and British. He warns one of the guards in the area that... That's so great. I love it when the enemy knows about my presence before I even fucking get there. I'm sure this has nothing to do with the Colonel's attempt at a complete security breach any percent speed run. I'm going to swap down a couple of bombers and flies. We'll see what he's talking about in a minute, but the Colonel reminds Snake that this is a sneaking mission. There's no backup, no cover, everything is OSP, and make sure nobody sees you. That's fine, I got this. Let's have fun. The Colonel calls Snake to remind him how elevators work. Thanks for that, Colonel. While riding the elevator up from the dock, Snake sheds his scuba suit in a very bond montage for one of the coolest title sequences I'd ever seen in the game up to this point in 1998. So fucking cool. Throughout this whole section, the Colonel just keeps repeating parts of the briefing to you, including the already stated objectives. It's the same thing with Naomi, going over the use of the anti-freezing peptide again, even though it was explained to Snake in the briefing just a short time ago. Now, you might put this down to the idea that the devs probably thought that people were likely to skip over the full briefing, and so maybe at least a few details should be repeated in the opening dialogue for those players. But I have two other competing theories as to why this might be happening. The first is that the Colonel probably shouldn't have come out of retirement, and he's repeating himself because tragically, memory is often one of the first things to go. I mean, he was born somewhere around the late 30s, which in 2005 puts him at or around 70 years old now. That's a good run even nowadays. I'm amazed that the lead paint hadn't gotten to him by this point. The other possibility is that what Naomi saw in Snake's eyes was utter derangement, and the trauma has gone so deep it's made him animalistic. You know, it's like he doesn't have a support team, he has handlers. They bagged him and tagged him out in the Alaskan wilderness, popped him full of rage juice, and unleashed him into the enemy base. Maybe it's not a weird translation thing that Snake keeps repeating things that are said to him. Dude, is just lost. Campbell and the others are just calling him periodically to shout instructions at him until he does what they want. Naomi reiterates that the shot she gave you was an anti-freezing peptide and that she's also kind of snarky and for a scientist she's pretty loose. You mean you've seen them naked? Make no mistake, I'm not a nurse, I'm a scientist. Well if you make it back in one piece maybe I'll let you do a strip search on me. Snake sneaks out of the lift and behind some crates to get a look at the hind D parked on the helipad because he can't keep a good meme down. Behind D? Colonel, what's a Russian gunship doing here? 
The colonel confirmed already that a couple of S-16s had taken off from Galena as a distraction for Snake's infiltration, which, given Liquid was talking about someone coming through the underground entrance and posted guards to keep watch for them, pretty sure that distraction didn't have the intended effect, but whatever. Oh, a couple of bothersome flies. So he was talking about dealing with the distraction jets and, wait, in a fucking hind D? Liquid heads out to take on the fighter jets in the hind D, and look, we'll talk about how it's weird that an attack helicopter can take on two fighter jets that are much more advanced, but where the hell do these things keep coming from? Wow, you must be crazy to fly a hind in this kind of weather. Who's that? Then there's Mei Ling, in her teens at this time of the series. No, seriously, I can't find an exact age for her anywhere. Mei Ling is a tech specialist and analyst. At one time, a promising aviation student in the ROTC at MIT, she dropped out due to inconfidence brought about by her poor vision. Instead, she developed the Soliton Radar, which shows the precise enemy position and their field of view relative to the user's position, and did it without having to develop new technology to get the job done. She's also responsible for the codec, and the specifics of which are weird and we'll get into another time, but effectively it scrambles communications on one end and descrambles it on the other end in an instant, allowing for immediate secure communication. And that would be fucking great if we would just change the frequency! So with all that expertise and talent, what's her role in this support team? Well, she's been assigned to this mission as a visual and data processing specialist. What can I do for you, Snake? That's right. She saves your game. And of course, Snake doesn't pass on an opportunity to hit on her because of course he doesn't. And this is where the whole thing starts to feel a little bit like a Hiram anime because she seems to be into it too. I can't believe I'm being hit on by the famous Solid Snake. Oh, right. And at least in this version of the game, Mei Ling feels as though she was written by Saban. Being Chinese and what with this game being made in the 90s, she has a few dozen Chinese proverbs memorized. In China, they say, it's better to live ugly than to die beautiful. He who knows that enough is enough will always have enough. You must cross the river before you tell the crocodile he has bad bread. Wow, you know all sorts of great quotes, don't you? The accent is rather exaggerated. Yes, it is. We'll get into that. Sorry. And her role as a technical genius is severely underplayed in favor of the shy, wilting flower stereotype. That is, of course, when she's not being a huge fucking freak herself. You're watching everything? Of course. If you were my boyfriend, you'd never be able to cheat on me. Being monitored 24 hours a day, that'd be like hell. Don't think of it like that. At least you'd never get lost. Oh, also, Naomi and Mei Ling are both played by Karen Learning and Kim Nguyen, respectively. Neither of those are their real names. At this point, Campbell tries to coach Snake on how to infiltrate the base, but do we really need to do this? I thought you brought me on board for this mission because of my expertise in literally saving the world. Did you just assume that I forgot how to soldier in the last six years? The front door of the facility is sealed up, and it would be too obvious to just open it in front of the enemy, so you need to, um... Uh, you need to crawl inside this through an open vent. Um... And then if you climb inside this truck over here, you'll... You climb inside for a pistol and... Find a pistol. Did I do that already? By the way, sorry to disappoint you, but I did manage to smuggle out my smokes. How did you do that? In my stomach. Oh yeah, I've heard that's a thing that people can do, but it wasn't something I ever saw in person. Cigarettes were generally difficult to come by in juvenile detention. Already in this opening section, there's a lot of stuff you'll find if you go looking for it. Ammo, rations, chaff grenades, which can be used to jam surveillance cameras, gun cameras, your own radar, basically any kind of electronic equipment. <laughs> you also find Searchlights, a surveillance camera whose presence on a militarized nuclear storage facility baffles Snake for some fucking reason. A surveillance camera? And... <laughs> some more guards to deal with. This was cool for me to play as a kid growing up in the late 90s, but I can only imagine how mind-blowing it would have been to go from this... to this. Some of you kids might not understand, you know? People these days get remakes of remakes and complain that the near photorealism hasn't completely overcome the uncanny valley effect yet. You wouldn't get it. I see you with your shooters designed to look like they were made in the same decade I was born, but doing stuff games from that time couldn't have even dreamed of doing and would have made any computer from that time that tried to run them explode. But there was a time when we unironically looked at this and were amazed at how realistic it was, and not just because of its appearance. See, Metal Gear Solid did what so many other franchises from older generations entering the new one tried to do, and that's maintain the same kind of gameplay design and feeling while literally adding an extra dimension to the game. Unlike many of its contemporaries though, no, not you baby, shh, you're perfect. 
Metal Gear Solid not only stuck the landing, but evolved the mechanics from the previous games to such a degree that it helped usher in an entire subgenre of games. Let me show you what I mean. So this is a stealth game, and you are sneaking around just like in the other games. And even though you, the player, can hear Snake's footsteps, his sneaking suit effectively renders them silent to the guards around him. Though some textured surfaces will produce enough noise to pull the attention of nearby guards. Also, Snake can now knock on surfaces he's leaning against to lure guards away from their posts. Walking over some surfaces will also start producing footsteps that guards will follow if they spot them, which can be used to your advantage. Also, either because of Snake's advanced age, or maybe the fact that these are genetically enhanced soldiers, means that beating them to death takes a lot longer than it used to. And if you keep shooting without a suppre- Hey wait, that's not meant to happen. And shooting them without a suppressor equipped will just keep drawing attention, so really, it's just better to avoid setting up the alert altogether. And the best way to do that... It is time, Snake. Time to go to work. Leave nobody alive. And then as soon as you get to the vent, the colonel will call to explain how to crawl through the vent. That base must have some kind of ventilation system to recirculate- Fuck me, is it just a Foxhound Commander thing to constantly call and harass your agents while they're in the field? As early as the beginning of the game, some of your choices are gonna start changing what you see and experience. For example, crawling through either vent will result in Snake receiving a call from McDonald Master Miller, so he can brag about how he's so much better at Alaska than you. Well, I know lots about survival in a harsh environment. I've lived in Alaska longer than you. Yes, the same McDonald Miller from Metal Gear 2, also known as Kazuhira Miller, but not yet at this point in the timeline. Our timeline, not the game timeline. It's only if you crawl through the vent on the ground floor, which is flooded and full of mice, that he'll call to tell you about those mice. The mice will swim through the water to find air faster, you see, so following them will lead you through the flooded part of this one-way vent. Fuck off, Miller. I mean, look at him, with the sunglasses and the haircut, he's basically Bear Grylls with some Johan thrown in. And crawling in through the upper level vent, he won't say anything about the mice because there aren't any in there with you, but you do get to creep on these guards as they talk about their evil plans out loud even though they're apparently aware that you're losing the facility. Did something happen? There's an intruder. Really? He's already done three people. Hey, I killed a lot more than just three. Say so he's using stealth too. Stealth? Okay, well they're clearly not talking about me then. Oh shit, they're not talking about me then. Press the action button to drop down. Uh, fucking really? Use the elevator to change floors. I kind of grasped that concept from a few minutes ago when the elevator changed my elevation. And I can assure you, Colonel, that the last two missions required extensive and exhaustive use of fucking elevators. One of the earliest complaints about Metal Gear Solid when it first released was just how frequently your support team called you to tell you how to play the game. At the time, people were irritated that it was just repeating stuff that was in the manual, and they weren't wrong about that. I mean, you've seen it already. I can't even scratch my ass without the colonel calling me to be like, Beep, beep, snake, press the action button to sniff your finger. Before we move along, we should get a hold on Nastasha. Played by Renee Collette, not her real name, is the female analyst, weapons expert, and anti nuke advocate that we heard about in the briefing. She's a cool character, but also completely non essential for progression, and even the game doesn't easily give you her frequency. You can get it right at the start if you call the colonel back, you know, eventually. Good, you've got yourself a weapon. To use it, first hold down the R2 button to enter weapon mode. Then Don't select the weapon you want with spotted. the directional button. Be careful when you walk. After you've selected the weapon you want, let go of the R2 button to exit Snake. weapon mode. The weapon you are selecting should appear in your hand. Don't take your gun and be displayed in the display window. window. If you have a gun, if you press R1, you'll be in different zones. You should ask our military analyst, Nastasha. Her frequency is 141.52. 
Once you do get her frequency, she'll generally have something relevant to say at whatever given moment you call her, and is also kind of your Diane or Castler during boss fights. It should be noted though that she is way more useful than either of those two ever were. She's also semi-important to the series later on, but I mean like, later on. When I say we'll get to it, I wouldn't hold your breath just yet. Right now, we're heading down to the first basement level. <laughs> And you can... Look at the radar. It's picking up the DARPA chief. He's the green dot. Hurry and rescue him. Okay, yes, thank you, Mei Ling. And you can go around to the back of these cells to this ladder here that leads to the vent shafts and... Okay, Snake. I get it! If you I know how to climb a fuck... While you're in here, you can immediately go left for some ammo and then look down on Johnny, a recurring character in this and future games. He's on the toilet right now, which is a recurring motif for Johnny, though later he'll be characterized by recurring violent diarrhea. Kojima, why are you like this? Boy, oh boy, that woman is built all right. The built woman he's referring to here in this cell? Is that a woman? I guess it was a lonely time for you in Alaska, huh, Snake? I won't go into her identity yet because spoilers, but she seems pretty determined despite her current situation. And finally, crawling over here. Snake, the DARPA chief's signal is coming from somewhere in that area. This business attired plot device is Donald Anderson. Danderson to his friends, probably. Voiced by George Bird, not his real name, he's the DARPA chief and one of the hostages we're here to rescue. For anyone who doesn't have Tom Clancy on their nightstand, DARPA stands for Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency, a US department for developing new technology for military application. There's something of a linchpin in the US military industrial complex, which is a fact about the circumstances of the in-game setting, but also a real true fact about real life. Also, this cutscene alone is about eight minutes Long, so let's just touch on the highlights. Who, who's that? I'm here to save you, DARPA Chief Donald Anderson. Really? First terrorists launch a nuke. Sweet Jesus. It's possible. Classified information. Experimental weapon. A nuclear equipped walking battle tank. Metal Gear. You knew? Run ins in the past. Godforsaken arms tech mass production. Metal Gear Rex. Hey! Shut up in there, will ya? So the conversation starts out on a strange note, with Danderson remarking, you don't look like one of them, which, really dude? Danderson seems unaware of the fact that the people who have taken over the facility are terrorists, which is also kind of weird. Was he assuming that it was an invasion? A private militia? Or maybe it was a hostile takeover? Ha <laughs> that's a, that's a follow up to a joke I haven't made yet. <laughs> He also doesn't know that they've threatened to fire a nuke, which I guess makes sense, he's been taken hostage and didn't even know by who. Why would he know what their intentions are? So of course, he goes on to confirm that, yeah, they have the capability to fire a nuke. Wait, they fucking do? Snake demonstrates that the information he's working on is that this is just a nuke storage and disposal facility, but you know you're about to learn some wild shit when you hear the words, What I'm about to tell you is classified information. You know, he says we've been working on an experimental new weapon, and given his profession, then it's safe to assume that he means the US government and I. So yeah, secret shady military shit is probably a given. He says it's a weapon that can launch a nuke from anywhere in the world, a nuclear equipped walking battle tank. And of course this means... Metal Gear. Danderson is surprised that Snake knew about it, which raises so many questions. Does that mean his military clearance isn't particularly high? Yeah, I kind of doubt that, given what he's here for. Does he just not know where the intelligence for this project his joint running has come from? Like, did Armstead just show up with a massive mech out of nowhere with no prior field testing of earlier versions, but weirdly accurate data just to get the damn thing to run? And Danderson was like, you know what they say about gift horses? But this is the bureaucratic side of the US military, so you mean anything is possible. Or maybe he straight up doesn't give enough of a shit to read all the files about one of the most secret black projects. Because at this point, Snake is 2 nil and literal death matches against Metal Gear, so his very presence near Rex should be a huge source of stress for Danderson right now. He goes on to say that the whole thing has become a huge shared project between the government and arms tech and that they were here to proceed with mass production if their field test was successful. Reading between the lines, that sounds like the field test is going to either be a false flag attack on Alaska or a legitimate attack against Russia. Either case would then be used as justification to start a war and allow the government to contract private military interests and create an armored division of nuke carrying robots. But I'm getting ahead of myself, let's just keep that in mind for now. 
Rapidly corrupt capitalism aside, Dandison says that they're probably finished arming the warhead because these guys are pros, and hey, didn't you even know who they were a minute ago? Why are you so suddenly knowledgeable about their capabilities and how their plans are progressing? Hey! Shut up in there, will ya? But I thought that all nuclear warheads were equipped with safety measures. Some kind of detonation code that you have to input. Oh, you mean PAL. Yes, of course, there is a PAL. So with the guy presumably still standing within earshot, Snake and Danison continue talking at the same volume about how to disarm the warhead that Rex has been equipped with. Danison says that there's two passwords needed to arm the device. He has one, and the president of arms tech, Baker, has the other. And of course, Danison has already given up his passcode because Psycho Mantis, one of the rogue members of Foxhound, can read people's minds. Yeah, I think I remember reading something about that in the Metal Gear 2 manual, how Foxhound trained for ESP abilities, and I'm just now realizing that part was probably written to incorporate the law from this game after the fact. God damn it. Snake correctly deduces that if they get Baker's password as well, then everything is fucked. This is bad. And Anderson says that there's a way to stop the launch. What? The card keys. Card keys. Baker has them apparently, and there's three of them. Okay. Three card keys. Danison tells Snake that Baker is likely on the second floor basement. Second floor basement. Okay, Snake buddy. I need you to fucking stop. Danison also tells you that the area that Baker's been moved to has a lot of electronic jamming, that they've cemented up the walls but haven't painted them. And then he gives you a level 1 security card, which come the fuck on. The DARPA chief only has a level 1 security clearance on this base. He was here to oversee a top secret project that he was effectively in charge of, or at least shared joint control of. Are we really supposed to believe he had the most basic level of security clearance? Then he starts pressing for information about the mission, which is kind of weird, and really nothing about this has been quite right since the beginning has it? Ten minutes ago, this dude didn't even know who'd taken him or what they wanted, but then somehow he has all this other information about them, what they're doing, how they've hidden Baker away and so on. Then he's pushing and pushing, you know? This is highly fucking suspicious. Oh, fuck, he's having a fit it? or something. <gasps> and the woman in the next cell over starts smashing on the door and Danison's just screaming out in pain. He says dead like that, but then... Naomi, the chief. What happened? Naomi says it looked like a heart attack, and the colonel nearly says the quiet part out loud. Snake demands to know if the colonel is hiding something, which he denies, and then almost but not quite immediately suggests that, yeah, maybe he is hiding something? Snake, you've got to understand. This op is security level red. You need the highest security clearance to get access to the complete file. You want me to believe that you're in charge of this op, but you don't have complete access to the file? I told you, the Secretary of Defense is in operational control. I'm just here as your support. Yeah, he's definitely full of shit. Hang on, how long did it take to explain all that? Could I have just played the entire fucking cutscene? Oh well, nothing to do, but... Wait, someone's coming and it isn't me. Hello? What? Don't move. Oh. I mean, it wouldn't be the first time I was knocked out like that if it happens. Hey there, folks. Do you love the content you see here on Fox Tank? I mean, you've watched this far, so I assume you do. Why? Maybe you want to support my burgeoning paranoia for your entertainment. I won't lie, I'm fine with that. Here at Fox Tank, we're not afraid to take your money. Just head on over to my coffee page and throw a buck into my proverbial change jar. With time and enough donations, I'll be able to answer such mysteries as what really happened in the timeline of the games and what is the true canon? Where did the first designs for Metal Gear truly come from? What is a vamp and why is he like that? Why Kojima is just so Kojima? Why does everyone hate Raiden when he's clearly best boy? Is there secretly an alternate dimension timeline to the game? 
names and why is it both an absolute certainty and guaranteed to end with rising all the same? What is Ocelot's whole deal? No, seriously, what the fuck is wrong with that guy? And probably some other weird shit, not even related to Metal Gear if I get bored. And your support will help to feed the insatiable goblin-like lust for pizza I've developed since the beginning of the global pandemic.